Welcome back YouTube. Today we're going to be doing a little more controversial uh, video. It's going to be the Franklin Library comparison with the Eastern Press and the Folio Society. Some pros, some cons of each, and um, which one you should buy. So I've been getting a lot of uh, questions regarding, you know, which Franklin Library book should I buy, which Eastern Press, which Folio Society, why is one better than the other, why are some more expensive than the other. So I hope uh, that this video, I'm not going to give typically any recommendations, I'm going to show you the books, show you what could be interpreted as good or bad, and then you make the decisions for yourselves of um, which books you want to stick with. Okay, so let's take a look at the books that we're going to be taking a look at. I'm going to do two full, uh, two Eastern Press books, two Franklin Library books, and uh, one Full Society book, uh, maybe two, um, because in terms of the points and, that I'm going to try to get across, uh, Full Society typically um, stays uh, uniform. So let's look at the Eastern Press first and foremost. So I'm going to look at, this is The Last Days of Socrates by Plato, and this book is from, uh, it comes with a little note there, was from 2000. And this is The Lives of the Twelve Caesars by Suetonius, and this is from, it came with this big notes from the archives. This is from 1993, so it's earlier, okay? So let's go through them both. In terms of their appearance, like all Eastern Press books, they're bound in genuine leather. But, of course, you may not be able to see in the video, when I, in person here, this leather on this particular book here is has is far more smoother it doesn't have give to it per se but um, it feels like it's more supple over here you can see the more the grains of leather better than over here this this the grain here is, is smoothened out more uh, but it's much harder and it feels more like hot uh, of course it is hot but it feels like um boiled leather like it's extremely hard and this is indicative of all of the Eastern Press books that are more recent. All the books that I own from the Eastern Press are exactly like this, except for a few, this being one of them. This one here is far, like I said, smoother, softer, and it feels much nicer in the hands. It feels like it's uh, been bound in fresh, uh, fresh leather. And you can see, uh, it's hard to see in the video, perhaps you, know, you can see like the soft edges here. And the leather is a little more thick, uh, thicker, and probably a good way to describe it is cushioned more than this hard leather here. So that's the terms of the appearance. In terms of the embossing, um, they're pretty much the same. Yeah, they're pretty much the same. Uh, if you look at the inside, Eastern Press Books, um, it just happens to be that the, the end sheets of these are exactly the same color and the uh, same material. So that's... That's fine. Uh, they both come with silk ribbon markers, exactly the same, and the paper, exactly the same. Acid-free, neutral paper. Uh, you can see some of the nice pictures that this one comes with, with a description on its own individual page here. The Last Days of Socrates, um, you see the picture of the front, like the other ones, but uh, there's no pictures in between, but that's not, um, not an indicator sign of whether it's better or less, that's just the nature of, um, of the content of this particular book here. So in terms of their appearance, this older Eastern Press book, and I have some other older Eastern Press books, they just happen to have nicer leather uh, than the newer ones. They're both genuine leather, it's just the treatment of the, le uh, of the leather. Like I recall a commercial I heard, what's the difference between the leather of a Mercedes and the leather of say on a Toyota? The leather is usually exactly the same leather, it's just how it's treated, how it's uh, styled, how it's sewn together, it's what's put into the leather that makes it different. But in terms of the material itself, there's not much difference, if any. Uh, so that's basically how I can describe these two. It's not a huge jump, it's not something to say, wow, this is so different, but you can tell just when, uh, when you're handling it. So that's 
the Eastern Press. As I said, this is from 1993, this is from 2000. So let's move on to Franklin Library. And this is where it gets a little more controversial. We have here the Annals of Tacitus, and this is T.S. Eliot's Collected Poems. Now this is going to be a world of a difference. First of all, now I don't want you to judge based on how I received this book. Uh, it just happened to be the bookseller. This book was printed upside down and separate from the book block, which was very nice of them to do. I don't know how full uh, Easton, uh, sorry, Franklin Library, if it was them who rebound this book, maybe it was damaged or something, but printed it upside down and backwards. So uh, I don't know how that happened. Now, Franklin Library makes high quality books as well. However, unlike the Easton Press, they went out of business, but you can attribute that to uh, uh, the market forces because Easton Press kind of evolved by making very modern books and binding them in leather and more pulp culture books. You know, they have Star Trek books and stuff like that. Um, but this book here is published. Let's just look at the, the text block. Uh, let's go in here. 1982. That's when the text block was uh, published. I'm not sure when this, um, this format of uh, Franklin Library, it is indicative of an older book. Now this I consider absolutely revolting and disgusting. First of all, it's not leather. It has the appearance of leather. Second of all, this is not gold embossing. It's printed right in the front. This is basically paper on top of board. That's what this is. It may appear as leather, but it doesn't, it doesn't even have the texture of leather, let alone it being real leather. There is no ribbon marker. The gold edging is extremely low quality. It looks like um, satin gold paint on there. Same thing as back. The spine is flat. It is not rounded. It is not backed. Uh, same thing printed on here. Fake band, uh, fake ribs, but that's, that's normal in terms of the ribs. They're usually not bound in the medieval style. Um, but this I consider a revolting book and I'd rather have a paperback version than this version here. Uh, I kept this simply as a demonstrating model because I do have another Annals of Tastis. I'll show you it from the Franklin Library. This is their higher quality version of the Annals of Tacitus. Quarter bound in leather, rounded back, actual gold embossing, even golden embossing on this um, buckram type front here. Uh, higher quality gold on the edges, but uh, I'm not extremely impressed um, with it. And this is published. It's the exact same inside. That's why I believe they have been changed out because the inside is exactly the same. And I, maybe it's the same year. Let me just check right here. 1982. They're exact same book block on the inside. So the content is exactly the same, except this one was printed upside down and backwards. And I don't know what year, it must be a more recent year because if you look online, it's a fact that as Franklin Library was starting to go out of business, their quality severely plummeted until it was basically garbage. But Franklin Library still has some amazing older books that are extremely high in value and extremely high quality. So please don't judge based on this. What this should just tell you, and you can make your uh, judgments for yourself, is that you should uh, look at the older Franklin Library books because they are of extremely higher quality before their eco the economics pushed them down. So that's the Annals of Tacitus and this disgusting binding, but um, you can judge for yourself. Now this, this is one of my prize, my collection, just because of the material and how it was done. Like I said, this is T.S. Eliot's Collected Poems from 1909 to 1962. Okay, first of all, the leather is so soft and it's cushioned. It's almost like this one here, but it's a little bit different. I even think it's a higher quality than uh, the Lies of the Twelve Cedars by the Eastern Press. Uh, the embossing is fine because it's fine lines, but it's deep within the leather itself. Uh, which shows you how thick the leather is. And that's where that uh, idea of um, 
cushioning I'm saying is coming from. It's the thickness of the leather and the treatment that it's done. Right when you put it over, you don't see any leather grain at all. It's so smooth and out. It's not suede, but it's almost like it's on that bordering. It doesn't have the suede texture, but it has the softness almost of, uh, of suede. Rounded back, of course. Uh, very prominent uh, ribs on there. There's one, two, three, four, five, six on here. And then you have the same design on the back as the front cover. In terms of the gold on the edges, it is a higher quality um, looking. Whether it's the same treatment, I'm not sure. I doubt it. Uh, because this is a total paradigm shift from this plasticky paper uh, binding here. And there's quite a few books that Franklin Library published that look like this, that are not made of genuine leather, that are tried to appear as leather, that are basically just paper with printed on there. And um, one of my viewers told me he bought a book and because uh, it was really cheap. Like say something like this, 10 20 maybe they can steal $30 off you, and then you got something like this, 40 50 60 70 80 a $100, uh, some of them $300 uh, because of their quality. Like their other books, and like Eastern Press, you got the silk more end papers, which is really nice. Like this, paper end papers. Not that that's bad, it's just that it's different. The second side, of course, acid-free neutral paper. This however, is cotton rag paper. Unfortunately, I don't think you'll be able to see in the camera, but you'll see the fibers in the paper. This particular book, very thick paper, and uh, you can feel the texture, and if you uh, looked at it in person from the 100 greatest books of all time, if you looked at it in person and felt it, you'll see it right away. You'll see T.S. Eliot there, 1976. That's when this book is from. Uh, let me just confirm on the back here. A, that's what's, yeah, 1976. So that's when this edition was was from. Comes with the silk ribbon marker. It does not come with the silk ribbon marker. But like I said, I think they interchanged the book blocks because this is the same book block and it does have the silk ribbon marker. So. Now there's one thing that we have to understand in terms of the Franklin Library and Eastern Press, okay? And that is a lot of people buy them for usually one of two reasons. A lot of people think that if you buy them, they'll go up in value. And a lot of people buy them because they look good. And maybe the third option, both. So uh, when I have these on my shelf, they look beautiful. They look like the old Englishman's, uh, the old English Lord's Library. Fine. They look really good. If you're planning on buying them and not selling them, then really it doesn't matter. But the thing is with these books is um, they're basically copies of a more prestigious company called the Limited Editions Club. Uh, and basically these are reprints in terms of, uh, some of them are not, so don't judge all of them. You have to do your own research. But say something like this is a reprint of a reprint by the limited editions club. So if you want, say, a true first edition, now you're not gonna get a first edition of Suetonius, but perhaps something like this, you can go uh, and get it from the limited editions club. Now, some of their books range in the thousands of dollars, and then some of them are much more affordable, like within the same price range as this. But uh, let's see the information page on here. Let's try to get some information from this and see if this is a first edition here, and it is not. 1930, 1940, 1942, 43, 62, 63, 54, 56, 59, 63, and we just keep going and we're at 76. This is not a first edition. I'm not saying that Limited Editions Club has a first edition as well. However, it is more likely, and it is indicative of the Limited Editions Club, to have first editions, okay? And sometimes these editions get first edition book plates and put them in there, fine. Not a true, true first edition, but it has a first edition book plate in it. Um, so if you're if you're one of those real collectors, you won't really go for the Franklin Library Eastern Press unless it is their deluxe editions. Um, like I said, this is out of business. This is not. 
if you you can find their new deluxe editions not all of them but some of their more modern classics 21st century classics maybe late 20th century classics um, that are signed are usually true first editions but their reprints like of this are reprints of reprints of reprints of reprints their value is not even in the leather itself it's basically like anything it's what value you put on it and a lot of these editions were on unlimited runs meaning that they're not numbered they're not limited to anything and they just keep printing 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 uh, which of course suppresses the value um, that's not to say that there are not valuable books within the Franklin libraries and press that quite contrary um, there are a lot of books that range into the hundreds and even thousands of dollars just because they're hard to find um, because like the limited editions club what they're known for the best is having original artwork uh, limited editions club is prized to have even Pablo Picasso who uh, did artwork for them in some of their books um, and these guys don't really do that um, but like I said they're more modern classics not this one but the Eastern Press do do that so if you're looking for value and increase in value something like this may is not really gonna do that for you you're gonna need a deluxe edition to do that for you and something maybe that's signed, numbered, uh, original artwork. So that's these two books, make of it what you will. Now we're gonna go on to the granddaddy and it's become a big phenomenon and that's the Folio Society. So this is Beowulf from the Folio Society. You'll see it says Beowulf right there. Now Folio Society is well known for every single book they make comes in a slipcase at least. So all their standard books come in a slipcase. They have the their normal line and they have the limited editions line. I'll probably grab a limited edition just to show off, but you, there's I have videos of all these books on my channel. Um, so they're known for doing slipcases and a lot of times original artwork in their books. Um, they do some pretty cool things. They commission uh, rising you know, aspiring artists and some famous artists as well. They also get some pretty well-known authors and scholars to uh, write their um, forewords and introductions of their books. So let's take a look at Beowulf here. You'll see this yellow slip um, slip case here, and you got the horse, the Norse horse on here, and this is painted on because you can actually feel it and see the uneven edges, and that's part of the magic of this here. So let's. Open this up, it's pretty tight in there, so I don't wanna... Okay. So as you can see here, this is quarter bound in genuine goat skin leather. It's embossed in gold. By, you see Seamus Haney there. And this is a linen uh, front piece here, and you can feel the deep gold embossing here in this Nordic Norse pattern here. And uh, unlike the Eastern Press, they don't really do the gold on the edges. However, this one does have gold on the top edge. And um, for most, for those of you who don't know it, although it does look good, the gold was put there, it's to protect uh, the pages from dust. But all their books, like the Eastern Press and Franklin Library, uh, are printed on acid-free neutral paper. So, let's take a look here. So you see, not silk end papers, but this is feels more, it's a textured end paper. And um, in the end, it really is, higher quality. As you can see there, a verse translation. This is from 2010. It's been republished, however, because of popular demand. Very thick paper, heavy stock, acid-free neutral, like I said. Uh, 1999, 2000, 2010, and then this is the fourth printing, 2013. Explicitly states that right on, the, uh, on there, which is very nice. So let's take a look and take a look at the artwork as well in here. So this is an introduction here. Uh, let's see here. You have the intro here. And I don't know if it says who the intro of this particular is by. Um, Sorry, my camera just died out there. But let me uh, continue where I left off. So you have the original artwork, like I said, original verse, translated verse with the numbering in the side, so it's more of an academic text. If um, you're studying this type of stuff, it's easy to go straight to the line that you're talking about, 781. So you go 780, 781, that's the line you're talking about. You said you got these uh, nice borders there, 
like that is a beautiful example of a nice border. You got some annotations in the side there. Some beautiful artwork in an edition like this. Like I said, the nice thick paper. You can just feel the quality. And right when you look at it, and you know what? I I started off with my collection with buying the Eastern Press and Folio Society, and I still, uh, sorry, the Eastern Press and Franklin Library. And you know what? I still look at them and I still buy them. But when it comes to um, buying books now, I really try to stick with the Folio Society. They're a better store of value. When it comes to translated text, you just can't beat them because, you know, they have people like uh, Robert Fiegel's who translated the Odyssey and um, more recent translations. I have, uh, for example, a translation of Marcus Aurelius' uh, Meditations by the um, Eastern Press. And it's an older translation. And when you read it, it reads more of um, that 18th century style. And it's just really, to be totally honest, annoying to read. But when you read a more recent translation, a 21st century translation, or even a 20th century translation, it's much more, it's written in our vernacular, right? It's more common sense. There's no flowery, really flowery language. It gets to the point. Um, the translations are just better and more modern. If you like that old style, then yeah, the Eastern Press, like I said, they don't do their own translations. They go and they do reprints of reprints of reprints. And of course, by that time, you're doing a reprint of what's a very old book. Um, so when you come with the Folio Society, you're getting more modern books, good quality, a better store of value, right? And you know what you're getting with the Folio Society, okay? Uh, the Eastern Press, like I said, is good, but they do have those drawbacks that they're reprints of reprints, right? That they don't do their own translations. That's not to say every single one is like that, but most of them are, especially if you're buying secondhand, right? Like I do that as well. Most of these uh, Franklin Library Eastern Press have to buy secondhand because they're no longer produced, right? That's not to say that I buy all of them secondhand. I'm waiting for a few now, Plato's Symposium and Plato's Republic. Um, but... In terms of these older translations, you've got to be aware. When you look at a book, look at the description, see who translated, look online. Is that the person you'd want to read? If so, go ahead. But if not, stick with the Folio Society. Like I said, a better, better store of value, better materials, um, original artwork that you won't see in other books, uh, specially commissioned pieces of uh, art inside here, and the, the four words of the books as well by... Uh, you know, scholars, and um, if you're willing to spend money on, say, limited editions, uh, the Folio Society, you can't go wrong. Um, I do not own any limited editions from the Easton Press or Franklin Library. I've seen them, and they're uh, really nice, but um, when it comes to limited editions, I really like um, the Folio Society for the limited editions. And you'll uh, find uh, two of the limited editions that I own on my channel. Uh, the Liber Bestiatum, which is a facsimile of an illuminated manuscript, as well as another illuminated manuscript facsimile, the Fitzwilliam Book of Hours from the Folio Society as well, on my channel. So I'll put them in the links below, but um, you can also find them if you uh, go on uh, the Leather Library's channel. I hope I've been informative, and I hope that I help you make future decisions. And uh, like I said, I don't want to tell you exactly what to buy, but the Beowulf, like here, from the Folio Society, Folio Society is really the way to go. I know a lot of people want to buy the Franklin Library and Eastern Press because they have that really old uh, style uh, indicative of, like I said before, an English Lord's Library, right? And they have that traditional conservative um, uh, style to them while the Folk Society, although tries to get that, tries to modernize it in a way. Um, but like I said, everything's up to you. Find what's best of value. Go on abbooks.com. You'll find uh, the secondhand books that are no longer in print. Folio Society, of course, is a big booming business. So you can visit the foliosociety.com if you want to buy uh, some of their books. And uh, even Eastern Press Books. That's easternpressbooks.com if you want to buy their books. Franklin Library still has their website running where they're selling their older books as well as Eastern Press Books. And I don't know if they sell any Folio Society. And that's Franklin... Uh, I think it's franklinbooks.com or franklinlibrary.com. You're going to have to check that out. I'll put it in the description below as well. So I hope I've helped out. Uh, if you have any comments or concerns, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below or even send me a private message. I'll be happy to answer. Don't forget to rate, to comment, and to subscribe. And as always, guys, keep on reading.